I'm Professor Henry Wu. I'm a urologist who specialises in prostate cancer. I'm going to walk you through what's involved in undergoing a prostate biopsy. Now there are a couple of ways in which you can perform a prostate biopsy. One is called the transperineal approach and the other is a transrectal approach. These days I only perform the biopsy using the transperineal approach and let me explain to you why. Now, when you perform a transrectal prostate biopsy, it means that you are taking samples of the prostate by going through the actual uh, rectum itself and puncturing the rectal wall. Now, as you know, the rectum is full of bacteria and there is a very real risk of having a serious infection, having a transrectal uh, prostate biopsy. Now, over recent years, the uh, incidence of infections after a prostate biopsy have been increasing and a lot of this has got to do with the fact that the bacteria that reside in the rectum are becoming um, more resistant to the antibiotics that we use for uh, infection pre uh, prevention. Now because of the fact that uh, it is getting increasingly difficult to uh, uh, to uh, prevent these infections as well as the fact that the men who get these infections are much sicker, um, it's clear that we have to take a different approach. We just can't see, we just can't keep on chasing our antibiotics with, uh, ch chasing the uh, uh, bacteria with stronger antibiotics, and instead there needs to be another way. And that other way is by performing the so-called transperineal prostate biopsies. Now, I'll just give you um, a little uh, um, bit of information about uh, uh, some of the basic anatomy. Now the perineum is that patch of skin that lies between the back of the scrotum and the anus. And as you know, the prostate lies immediately underneath the urinary bladder where you store your urine. And it surrounds the tube called the urethra, which passes through the middle of the prostate and then out through the penis. The prostate lies immediately above the perineum and immediately in front of the rectum. Now let's talk about exactly how we go about the process of doing the uh, transperineal prostate biopsy. You're given a, um, given a local anaesthetic as well as sedation. Um, this approach uh, has the advantages of where under sedation uh, you won't have any awareness of the procedure being performed and with the local anaesthetic being delivered it means that in the first hour or so after the biopsy you won't experience the pain that tends to linger on if you have a general anaesthetic alone. Now, when we do the biopsy, we place an ultrasound probe into the rectum. Uh, this helps guide us, helps guide the needle that uh, punctures the skin of the perineum and then uh, enters into the prostate gland. And as the needle goes into the prostate gland, we can take snippets of tissue, which we then send away to be looked at looked at under the microscope by a pathologist. Now there are some side effects that can occur with uh, undergoing a transperineal prostate biopsy. Now <clears throat> the most common is that of uh, blood seen in the urine which can typically last for three to seven days and if you dare to look you'll also see blood in the semen and the blood in the semen can sometimes last for even as long as four to six weeks. But because you know about this, you know you won't have to worry quite so much if you do see it. Um, the risk of infection by using this approach is almost negligible. So, <clears throat> so that's, uh, and that, that of course is the driving force by which we have shifted over to doing um, transperineal rather than transrectal biopsies. Now, if you're very unlucky, um, the prostate can sometimes swell in response to the biopsy and then can actually lead to a compression of the urethra that passes through the prostate and um, lead to difficulties or, or possibly a complete blockage when it comes to passing urine. Now a simple way to deal with that is that uh, we don't let you go home until you've proven to us that you are able to pass urine. Um, apart from that you may experience a little bit of bruising um, in the region of the perineum and uh, that's nothing to be uh, concerned about if you do see that. Um, <clears throat> after your um, biopsy has been performed, you uh, shouldn't drive for 24 hours and sh you should perhaps uh, avoid any heavy lifting for about, uh, 20, uh, sorry, about 48 hours. 
Uh, make sure you've got an appointment to come back for your follow-up uh, follow with the uh, biopsy results. And please do not hesitate to be in touch with my office if there's anything that is concerning you. I hope that this uh, explanation is of uh, uh, use to you. And once again, please do not hesitate to contact my office uh, should you have any queries. Okay, that's all for now.